happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to the Access Accelerator's Instagram Live series, The Entrepreneurial You, where we bring you inside the stores and stories of some amazing Bahamian young businesses. I'm your host, Ayanthea Ferguson, and today we are here at Boost Academy, the boutique smart school that's teaching their kids to take over the world. Let's go inside. So I am here now with Ms. Hansen, the director of Boost Academy. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for joining us. So tell me a little bit about this bright purple school on top <laughs> of our Rose <laughs> Avenue Hill. <laughs> well, basically we are a boutique school for grades four through 12, and we specialize in really individualized learning. So our, our kids, I guess, come out with a more well-rounded, real-world education. So why do you call yourself a smart school? <laughs> uh, we use a lot of technology. Uh, of course, the computers are not going anywhere anytime mm -hmm. soon. So instead of just you know, saying, OK, you are not allowed to be on your devices, we try to teach children how to use their devices effectively and make sure that they have the tools for when they go beyond. Awesome. Now I know starting a school, running a school is no small feat. <laughs> <laughs> right? Not. So talk to me a little bit about just the business behind running a school in the Bahamas. Well, you know, I'm the educator. My husband is kind of the brain, <laughs> the, the business person. The business person, thank you, uh, behind it. And uh, he does all the operations and the kind of behind the scenes stuff. My, my joy is really connecting with the students mm -hmm. and making sure that they're getting the best education possible. Um, so yeah, it comes with its challenges. I'd imagine. Especially in the <laughs> pandemic. Yes. And uh, you know, overall though, we just make it work. And we have a great support team, we have great staff, we have a great set of families, and every day I continue to love what I do. Awesome. So. And I think I read somewhere that you go from grades 4 to 12. Yes. So speak to me about that particular set of students that you cater to. Um, so basically, we, a lot of people call and say, when are you having a first grade? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they want to kind of get them in sooner, but ultimately right now, due to space, yeah. for one, um, it would be impossible to integrate everyone. And I, my specialty is really more middle school and high school. Okay. So even fourth grade for me, I'm like, okay, that's, that's a good age because that's when they're really getting more independent, mm -hmm. really can think for themselves and really yes. get those ideas out there. But um, for me, that's kind of my range that I prefer to work with. And what sets Boost Academy apart? What, why would a parent say, I'm going to send my child to this school versus any other school on the island? Huh. There's a few things, but um, what we've been hearing a lot in particular lately is that parents love the fact that we incorporate social emotional learning. We have weekly oh. guidance sessions. Um, right now we have uh, Denise Major in doing workshops with our children on sexual health and safety, which is something we had arranged already. Just just wait a moment, please, so Blake. Just, just about like, use the uh, restroom. Okay, just head through the next way and wait for me for a moment, okay, please? That's cool for Thank you. you. <laughs> the kids need yes. that time. <laughs> yes. This is, this is the exact transition time between classes, yeah. so I was like, oh boy, this is going to be I know, right? <laughs> um, but in terms, of, in terms of what we offer, I, parents really like the fact that we are very hands-on mm -hmm. in terms of like we're very in touch with their children and what's going on in their lives so it's not just a matter of you show up do your work and it's all academics only we really have a well-rounded approach where kids feel like family yeah you know it's yeah. they know when they come here they're valued they're loved and if they're not here they're missed yeah you know i just love the fact so, that i don't see uniforms and for me that's like okay this is a cool school <laughs> The kids like that. Right, yeah, I'd exactly. imagine. Yeah, absolutely. But individuality is important. Definitely. And I know you spoke about the importance of having a team and support behind you to get this up and running and keep this up and running. And I know that you are a client of the Access Accelerator. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about that partnership, why that's been so instrumental in you getting Boost Academy off the ground. Uh, that honestly is more, again, <laughs> I'm going to let Jay address that. <laughs> it is very important, mm -hmm. but uh, he's, the, he's the brains behind the 
financial side, all yeah. of the um, kind of structured aspect of the behind mm -hmm. the scenes. So I think I'd rather let him address all that right. if that's okay. <laughs> no problem. Um, if you guys would like to head up to where Jay is Sure, so you right want to now. give us a quick tour? Just tell us the space mm -hmm. that we're in and tell us where we're going next. Okay, so basically this is our reception area. Um, we have a small library here. We've, um, you know, it's a spot where children can come and p take out a book in the morning and we do quiet reading during morning meeting. This is a place that they kind of converge mm -hmm. first thing in the morning with social distancing in effect yes, as much as possible. I know. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll just go through here um, quickly where <laughs> where uh, the students actually would have been taking part in a workshop down in the basement. Let me check where they're at. Let's see if we could poke our heads in here. Uh, I don't want to interrupt the important workshop, but so they're having a workshop right now where Denise Major is teaching them. Uh, sexual health, HIV and AIDS, as we head into... Sorry, quick tour. <laughs> we don't so what's happening? We don't want to interrupt too much. Right now they're talking about risky behaviors and how to kind of have some interventions where necessary. So we, yeah, uh, we, won't, we won't stay long. We don't want to interrupt. <laughs> So it's important oh. then for you to teach them an array of topics, not just math, not just English. Oh, yes. Things that affect them in their lives now but and later. This is the thing. When, when children are dealing with social and emotional needs or you know, different things are going on in their lives, the last thing that's going to be on their minds if they're dealing with a problem is school. Is school. Exactly. So you pretty much have to address all of those issues if you're going to get them to pay attention in school. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, uh, in, in the light of our recent tragedy, you know, we, we already had these workshops arranged, but it became even more apparent that we need to continue those conversations about consent, yeah. about safety, and about how to reach out for help when you need it. Definitely topics I don't remember learning in school, sad exactly. enough, exactly. <laughs> but I'm happy that you know schools are now changing the way we speak to our kids and reach our kids, so super excited to hear about that. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we're going to go upstairs now? Yes, yeah, so let's make our way. All um, right. Watch your step. And you get a good workout in the school too, okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> the stairs are so many. <laughs> All right, so Ms. Hansen, what do we have here? So this is an energy seedling. It okay. is a device that was actually won by our primary students last year in a competition that the U.S. Embassy had. Um, it was basically for the uh, Earth Day, and okay. so they put together a little video showing how we're doing things at the school to be green, uh, cans for kids and community garden mm -hmm. and so forth. And so uh, this was their prize. And it comes with a complete curriculum from four to 12. Okay. And we've, um, so far, you know, we've assembled it, the students helped put it together, we've started learning some things about it, and uh, it basically is a comprehensive curriculum that is in addition to what we already teach. So we've had some volunteers in to kind of help us get a handle on it. Um, actually, one of our former students who started off um, going into an engineering program at the beginning of the pandemic, okay. and then pandemic kind of ruffled mm -hmm. those plans, uh, was able to come in and help out and run some lessons with our primary students on electricity and how, um, I guess, solar and wind can really help us in the Bahamas and that it's a technology that we should be looking yeah, towards. Definitely, yeah, definitely. So. All right, and we have some kids here, but yeah. we're going to first talk to Jay. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're gonna first talk to Jay. Um, Ms. Hansen told us earlier that you're the brains behind the operation. Did she say that? Oh. <laughs> behind the running of Boost Academy. So I was talking to her earlier, asking her earlier about mm -hmm. the importance of support yes. and being part of programs like the Access Accelerator. So 
Just talk to me about what that relationship has meant to you. It's, it's been very, very beneficial because being an independent school, like what that really means is you have to find the capital. There's no church or, or international organization behind you. So as a small business, as entrepreneurs, we know the struggle of finding capital. So once they came up with that program and they legitimately went beyond just, okay, I'm going to give you funding. I'm going to help you develop your business plan. I'm going to work out certain kinks. I'm going to assign someone to you to help you through this process after the fact that we give you the grants. And those have been very meaningful. I accidentally stumbled upon the SPDC through my uh, financial manager from RBC. Um, and it's been a wonderful process. It's helped us with the upgrades of the school and it's kept us, I would say, um, afloat during these difficult times. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, we have operations like the Access Accelerator or programs like the Access Accelerator, but what does it mean or what, what advice would you give to anybody else who may be looking to start a small business? I never call these small business because this is no small feat at all. <laughs> or looking to start a business and, you know, just reaching out to organizations like the SPDC for help. Because some people feel like, you know, they could do it on their own. And that's the advice right there. <laughs> reach out yeah no man is an island you need all the support you can get it could be very discouraging a lot of we used to say that entrepreneurship is for crazy people right because you have so many responsibilities mm -hmm. and it can become daunting at times and you want to give up but it, knowing that you have that support you know this is where you can get capital this is where you can get financial advice and they're, they're always doing these workshops that everybody can benefit from mm -hmm. so it's not just a once one trick pony there's yeah. so many different components to, to it. So I would suggest just reaching out for help, taking advantage of the resources, because we, we think of taking advantage as a negative thing, but sometimes you really do have to help yourself to others' expertise, mm -hmm. and that, that, that's helped. And do you teach your kids about financial freedom, oh. and entrepreneurship, oh. Oh, yeah. and stuff like that? Oh. How We, we definitely have had over the years kids independently want to learn about financial literacy. We just had a, a workshop with someone from uh, the expertise, the, one of the brains behind the sand dollar, come ah, and talk yes. to them about digital currency. One of our um, graduates last year, his final year, he wanted to major, get certified in cryptocurrency. Nice. So there is that, um, I guess, thirst. Mm -hmm. for that knowledge so we're just here to help them to be the best versions of right. themselves yes. i'm going to turn out to miss hansen i know with the pandemic a lot of students have been forced to go virtual to do school online a lot of parents are now trying to figure out you know maybe new schools they can get their their children enrolled in so talk to me a little bit about the program the curriculum here and some of the things you offer uh, so basically um, I, I guess I have my awesome students here right now who can attest to this, but um, like I mentioned, we really try to make it student-centered. So on top of our regular math, English, science, social studies curriculum, we do offer IPC, which is an individualized pathway curriculum. So whether students are interested in learning how to do video editing or whether they are interested in cryptocurrency or mm -hmm. so forth, they have that opportunity to explore that in some independent courses. Uh, we also have Life 101 where we teach about the Constitution and we teach real life skills that can kind of give them that um, assertiveness that mm -hmm. they need to go out there and go after what they want. Yeah. So uh, we do follow the Bahamian curriculum for our core subjects, but we kind of strive to go beyond that. And really our main focus is preparing students for the SAT exam because the majority of our students tend to go off to the US, Canada, right. UK, and really that's what they tend to be looking for is solid critical thinking skills, really high SAT scores, <laughs> all of that. So uh, that's, that's been our major push. Awesome. So from grades four to grade 12, yes. that, that's a... Uh, that's a wide, a wide spectrum of students. So you go from what? That's age what? That's eight? About eight. Seven, eight. 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 So what? Sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, we'll in some, in some, some cases, well. older. Yeah. How do you strike the balance? <laughs> I mean, you have to. Every child is different, and every group of children will be different. So lean it on the expertise of teachers. Uh, all of our teachers hold a master's degree or higher, 
and independently we trust them to carry mm -hmm. those particular tasks, carry it in where we need to fill in, we fill in. Yeah. You know? Um, but honestly, uh, I think you were asking some of the strike in the box as well from mm -hmm. the online. And yeah, the definitely. COVID, we already, we were already ready for online. Because okay. Because 100% of the curriculum is computer-based. Okay. Online programs. And we have a plan. So when COVID hit and we had to revert to, I guess, a hybrid model, it was an easier mm -hmm. transition. The hybrid aspect has caused a lot more problems because it encourages apathy. I can come to school at home. Yeah. I don't have to sign into Zoom. So now we're going on a more stringent face to face or recorded online. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, you sign and you go into your platform, we already have the assignment diary. You know what assignments you have when they're mm -hmm. due, just follow through. Yeah. What's the student, the teacher to student ratio? Eight to one. Ah, oh, not bad at all. Yeah. Not no. bad at all. Okay, and some of the, do you do pee? Listen, I was telling her just now, exercise is endless because the stairs going up, there's stairs going down. <laughs> there's a lot of walking. Beyond, beyond that, we have to give a huge shout out to Evolve Functional Fitness. Mm. They are an amazing gym. They have a PE program that keeps our kids in Awesome. They have yeah. an amazing swim program, and we know swimming is super important. Mm -hmm. It's a huge skill to learn, and they have a Great coaches, great staff. We love our partnership with them, and that's something our kids look forward to all the time. All right, awesome. Now I see you have some students here. Yes. So you said that you wanted them to talk to us a little bit, yeah. tell us about their experience being a Boost Academy student. So I think I can go around. Yeah, pick up the little. <laughs> <isn't amazing>. uh, <laughs> She's like, don't come to me. <laughs> we have grade seven, eight, nine, and eleven. Oh, Okay, yes. All right, so let's see. I can take it for you. <laughs> let's see, who wants to go first? I just want to talk about your experience being a Boost Academy student. So could you just give us your name and what grade you're in? Hi, my name is Shavir Bastian, and I'm in grade 8. So tell me about being a student here at Boost Academy. What's your favorite thing to do here? Being a student here at Boost Academy, my favorite thing to do is get along with everyone and, of course, to learn. Because not only do we learn like the basic math and English, we learn about life skills and stuff at an early age. Mm -hmm. We get a booster in learning about money, our history, and everything else. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Very well spoken. I have a question for all y'all. Yep. also her class rep. Ah, class rep. Okay, okay. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a real teacher. <laughs> remember everything a student does. <laughs> and she remembers everything a student does. Y'all like wearing your own clothes school, eh? Yes. I know. <laughs> I know. And I walked in, I was just like, hold on, now they ain't got no uniforms on. This already is a cool school. So what's your name and what grade are you in? Um, my name is Shoshante Arthur, and I'm in grade 8. All right, so you talked about liking to wear your own clothes in school, and we spoke to Ms. Hansen earlier about individuality, you know, in education. So what's, why are you so happy, I guess, that your school allows you to just be your individual self? Um, at Boost, they don't really have, um, well, they have an opinion on what you do, but they don't really, like, be hard on you on what you would have to do because they actually do what you do. Mm -hmm. They know that you want to be yourself and they let you be yourself at school. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Let me come back here to you. How are you? Hi. Your name and your grade? Hi, uh, I'm Elliot Feaster and I'm in grade 11. All right, so tell us, what, what are you gonna do after school when you graduate here? Uh, I plan to go to college for video editing. Okay, all right, and do you feel like what you're learning here is prepping you for the college world? Uh, yes. Um, I learn under Mr. J here. He takes me on to one of his shoots. He uh, allows me to experience what it's like to uh, enjoy and learn what, what goes on in the video editing world. Awesome. All right, I like that, okay? Now, me and y'all teacher used to work together a very long time ago. So I love the fact that he is bringing, you know, you guys on real life experiences you know he says he wants to be a video editor and you have allowed him to go with you on shoots to just get that hands-on training so what else hands-on do you guys do around here um 
anything and everything. We mm -hmm. accommodated the kids on, in their passions, mm -hmm. right? So we had a 12th, 11th, a 10th year student that was interested in the morgue. Oh. So she got her credits and she asked, do you think they'll let me intern at such a young age at the morgue? And I was like, why not? You're a great student. Mm -hmm. You already finished your credentials. It, it's, you want to do something else. Why not just do it? And she took on an internship and she got glowing wow. letters of recommendation. Now she's over there at Trent. So anything that they put their mind to, as long as we can accommodate, we will find partners in the community mm -hmm. to bring them on, to give them that real world experience. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So let me just go around to another student. Just wanted to plug that part in there. So what's your name and what grade are you in? Hi, my name is Grace Schuldice. I'm in seventh grade. All right, so what do you like about being a Boost Academy student? I like that you can express yourself in many different ways, and the students are kind, and it's a good time here. <laughs> it's a good time here, she says. You agree? <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right. You see, well, it seems like your students are pretty happy. They seem very well-rounded, so there are a lot of boutique schools popping up now, mm -hmm. right? There are a lot of boutique schools popping up now. Just tell our audience, you know, Give, give us the information, where you're located, how they can reach out to you, how parents can enroll their kids. Okay, so we have our website, boostbahamas.com. All of the information you need to know is right there. We have the apply now button. Uh, we are very accessible on email, telephone. Um, our telephone number is 676-8043 or 676-8044. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, I had a TikTok account. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, some of the students have seen it. I, I, I kind of tried to get out there with some of those like funny videos mm -hmm. to catch their attention in the beginning. But everything you can follow us on is at BoostBahamas mm -hmm. dot, um, on all of our handles. Social and media. just to remind them, you are grades 4 to 12. Yes. Any 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 um, plans for expansion or nursery? One grade one to three. Uh -huh. <laughs> no no nursery expansion plans at this time. Uh, we we have certainly had in the back of our minds some plans for expansion and growth, and we're going to see how things go and uh, plan accordingly. All right, you guys. Well, this has been the Entrepreneurial You with Boost Academy. We'll see you again soon. Be sure to follow the Access Accelerator page for more stories and tales of our young Bahamian businesses. We'll see you next time.